In today's video, I'm going to be going through various top tips to help you when you learn to drive. Now, these aren't my top tips, even though I do endorse all of them. They're all really great tips. They're actually tips from you guys. So, they're proven to work. So, stick around to watch the whole video. Some really great selection of tips here, and I'm sure they'll help you when learning to drive. So, on to the tips. The first tip is from Elliot. His tip is to always self-reflect after your lessons. So, think about what happened in your lesson, what went well, what needs to be improving. The things to improve on, maybe revise them. Go on YouTube, research them, Google it, ask your parents, ask your friends. Consider writing the things down as well. By writing it down, it helps you to remember. But if you're not much into writing, you don't have to write them down, but it really does help if you can write the things down that you need to work on. I love this tip from Catherine. She says once you pass your test, always do a bit of research before you drive to a new area. So go on Google Maps and go on Street View and maybe view the bigger junctions, the bigger roundabouts, and work out how they work before you have to tackle them in real life. A really great idea. Also having a positive attitude towards the learning to drive, even after you've passed your test. If you make a mistake, don't sit there dwelling on it. Use it as a positive learning experience. What have you learnt from that experience? What will you do differently next time? Hey there has a good tip. Watch lots of mock test videos on YouTube. This can help you stay more relaxed when you do a real test as you know what to expect. You also know what faults could be marked. You know what things to be aware of so you can increase your chances of passing first time. A tip from Ayub. I hope I'm saying that name correctly, if not, apologies. As well as watching lots of videos on YouTube, he advises, he also says to only book your test when you feel you're 100% ready to give you the best chance of passing the first time. He also advises against trying to meet a deadline, as this can often add pressure and can make you more nervous on the test day. A similar tip from Venution, hope I'm saying the name correctly again. So don't book your test until you're ready. You only learn to drive once, so make sure you do it properly. He also advises, drive nice and smoothly and calmly on your test, as this is what the sort of thing the exams are looking for. If you're making erratic decisions, you're braking hard, accelerating hard, it's showing you're not planning well, and you're just reacting to things rather than anticipating what might happen. Liz Spon advises, to help concentrate, maybe open the window, get some fresh air for a few minutes. That fresh air could help clear your head and just help you to concentrate. You could do this while you're driving, or just park up at the side of the road, get a bit of fresh air, take a break for a few minutes, and then go back and drive again. Talking about helping to keep concentrated while driving, Ministry Tia advises to chew gum while you're driving. This is a good tip, and it's also something I suggest my pupils often do. It definitely works, so give it a go. Try chewing gum while you're driving. It can really help. Cameron Me advises that if you learn to drive from the diesel car and then you buy a petrol car, be very careful the petrol car needs you to always press gas before you bring the clutch to the biting point, otherwise it might stall. Pressing the gas between one to one and a half thousand revs. This can reduce the chance of you stalling in a petrol car. It's also advisable to practice driving the petrol car and a quiet road to start with to get used to the difference. If you've driven diesel, you may have got into a habit of not pressing gas and you got away with it. You probably would not get away with it in a petrol car. Diego advises, if you're dealing with busy roundabouts and busy junctions, if you've got good vision on approach, look early. So slow and look early for those gaps. Don't be looking for the cars, look for the gaps. A nice positive mindset there from Diogo. Also, he advises, if you're a bit nervous, you could research tapping. Maybe Google it, see what we mean by tapping. Or also, try hypnotherapy. That can also work very well for driving anxiety. There are DVDs out there for hypnotherapy. One that one of my pupils in the past used was by someone called Paul McKenna. I believe that was his name. So maybe Google Paul McKenna and see what you come up with. A tip from Proomster is to treat the examiner as a normal person, maybe as your instructor. 
So before you go for your test, just convince yourself it's a normal person, just maybe it's your instructor just going out for a lesson. If you convince yourself of that, you'll help keep yourself calm. Rather than thinking the exam is like a robot, a normal person, maybe even talk to them at Premium to advise it. So if they didn't talk to you, maybe start a bit of a conversation with them. Zorg Fleeter advises that if you make a mistake, try not to dwell on it. Focus on what you need to do to recover from it, as this is what the exams are looking for. But don't really mind if you make a mistake. The most important thing is you deal with it and recover from it in a calm and confident way. So if you stall, restart and get going again. If you misjudge your parking, check it's safe, check your mirrors, check your blind spot and adjust your positioning. Perfect. A lot of the time people fail their test as they think they've made a mistake and they think they failed when they haven't. And then because they think they failed, they lose concentration. So this is why I think this is a really good tip. If you do make that mistake, just move on. Keep focusing on what you're doing. Another tip that I advise my students on the test, help stay calm, from Marlena here, is talk to yourself when you're driving. So her example is, okay, there's a cyclist. I can't overtake it yet. Maybe there's a bend. Or, I can see a bus pulling out, but can I overtake it? No, there's an oncoming vehicle. What's behind that bus? Any pedestrian is going to step out. Let's cover that brake. I'm ready to brake if a pedestrian steps out. So things like that. And no, the examiner won't think you're crazy. I know this is often a concern of talking to yourself in your test. The examiner's going to be sitting there thinking, what the hell are you doing? They're not going to be thinking that. They're very experienced. And typically, they've often been driving instructors before they've been a driving examiner. So they know what you're going through. And they know to help you to concentrate and to stay calm, talking out loud is a really good idea. So definitely give it a try, even in your driving lessons. Try talking to yourself, talking yourself through what you need to be doing. It's a really good tip, that one. Crystal's tip is to always look far ahead when you're driving. By doing this, you'll be able to see what's happening early and give yourself more time to react in a nice, calm and controlled and smooth manner. Often if you're not looking far ahead and you see things late, you'll get a panic reaction. So you might press that brake way too hard or you just panic and maybe press acceleration instead of the brake, forget to change gears, and maybe misjudge your positioning. So by looking far ahead, we can reduce this panic and help ourselves to stay calm. The tip from Lorraine is to imagine a roundabout like a clock face. So you're starting from six o'clock at the bottom of the roundabout. Any exit at 12 o'clock or before, you would normally use the left lane. Any exit after 12 o'clock, you would normally use the right lane. I like this tip as often people get confused with roundabouts because they think the first exit is always left. The second exit is always ahead and the third exit is always right. So when they come up to a roundabout, where the second exit is off to the right, they think, oh, what? What do I do? Left lane, it's second exit? I don't know. So if we think from all clock face, that generally works a little bit better. But do bear in mind, this rule does not work in all circumstances. If there's perhaps three lanes on the roundabout, the rules can change a bit. Sometimes that left lane could be left only, so just for the first exit. Then you need to use the right lane for following the road ahead. But this tip just helps a little bit with your normal roundabouts. But like I said, you be very careful if you have roundabouts with three lanes or left only lanes, as the rules do change there. Tip from Bailey here. Their tip is if a pause becomes a wait, then put your handbrake on. Or the phrase we like to use, if a pause becomes a wait, the handbrake becomes your mate. By putting the handbrake on, as well as the car being more secure, you can put your right foot over to the accelerator pedal to be more ready to accelerate and pull away. If you're sitting there holding the foot brake on, in my experience, you'll stall when you try and pull away, as you have to jump off the brake and you'll probably jump onto the accelerator and over accelerate and then rush the clutch and stall. They also advise if you get to a junction and you can't see, your vision is restricted to either the left or the right, 
then creep and peep. So what you mean by that is move out very, very slowly at maybe like half mile an hour and leaning forwards to improve your vision. By moving slowly, you can react quicker if a car comes around that corner. Less vision, less speed is the phrase us driving instructors like to use. Final tip from Jen is if you're doing a driving test with your instructor, the instructor should only let you go for the test if you're ready. So take that into account and be confident with that. If you're doing your test, you can do this, you're ready. Also, like earlier on, they advise to do some commentary driving, so talk out loud on your lessons. This can help you concentrate. Also, even if you say something wrong, it can help your instructor to step in and give you some advice. So maybe you might be comes around about and say, I'm going to use a left lane here. And the instructor might jump in and say, actually, Jen, you need to use a right lane here. Because if we look at the road markings, the left lane's left only. 